All these years of sharing deep wood stories and I've learned quite a few things. And I think the biggest thing that I've figured out after all of these stories that I've read is that you want to hide your toes very well in your sleeping bag because Bigfoot will try to steal them and misplace them. Anyways, with that said, today we're going to be sharing some creepy and allegedly true Deep Woods horror stories sent in by viewers just like you. As always, if you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, be sure to throw that my way at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. You can also submit them at r slash thedarkswamp on reddit if you prefer to do so. If you're new to the swamp, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications as I upload multiple videos a week. And be sure to join us for the live streams as I am starting to narrate scary stories again on live stream multiple times a week as well. So be sure you have those notifications on. Now without any further ado, let's jump right into these creepy and allegedly true Deep Woods Horror Stories that'll freak you out tonight. It Came From The Woods by Kate O. My name is Caitlin. I grew up in a small town in Wisconsin. Growing up, my dad used to mention this backyard beast. He didn't tell me what it was until I was about in middle school. A little bit of background before I begin. My dad was unfortunately hit by a drunk driver when he was just 17. The accident resulted in him losing his left leg and thus becoming wheelchair bound. He did still power through and worked a full time job working third shift. Our house is built into a hill and is connected top to bottom by a duplex that we shared with my grandparents. My parents lived in the bottom half and my grandparents in the top. This bottom half was connected to a garage and patio with doors on the side facing a patch of woods. I was only a little kid when this happened. I'm currently 22 years old now. Most of the details told to me about this was from my aunt and my father. My uncle was a high school football coach and my family would attend all the games. My aunt needed to learn the area better so she'd park her car at my parents house and get picked up by my uncle. After the game, my family went out for dinner and my aunt wanted to go home. So my uncle dropped her off to go get her car. My dad and I were the only ones home at this time. My uncle pulled out of the driveway and left. My aunt set her purse down and whatnot and got into the car. Then she looked up and saw a tall creature that as she described had many features of a dogman or a werewolf. It was looking in the patio door through the glass. She kept staring at it out of shock and the creature turned around and noticed her. It started slowly walking towards her car. My aunt buried her head into the steering wheel and, out of fear, waited. After some time went by, she saw the creature walking back into the woods. She turned the car on, floored it out of there, and chased after my uncle, who was already down the road by some good time. Now, this was before the time that everybody had cell phones, so my aunt damn near ran my uncle off the road. When he pulled over to confront her, she was hysterical and said there was a monster at your brother's house, and it was going to kill them. She was screaming at him. My uncle calmed her down and convinced her to drive the rest of the way home. My aunt called my parents' landline and told my dad everything. He immediately goes outside to investigate those woods, but he's never seen anything there. Honestly, I don't not believe her, but it does sound kind of crazy. But at the same time, I have felt like I've been watched from those woods from time to time. Screeching in the Woods by Takea Hello Swamp Dweller, it's me Takea. I have another story to send to you. This story is a bit more, I don't want to say cryptid, but I don't know what else to call it. Anyways, here are the circumstances leading up to my story. I started a new job about six months ago and recently decided to use a couple of weeks of vacation. I felt pretty introverted, so I hunted myself for about two weeks. Just my dog chief and myself. He's a 150 pound Newfoundland dog. Before I continue, chief really isn't like most Newfies. 
He was born and has always lived in the bush for what I believe was the first year of his life before I found him, during which he developed incredible hunting skills. I found him caught in my trap lines about nine months ago. I'll skip over a bunch of stuff to cut to the chase. We bonded very strongly during his recovery, and he is now a robust and healthy farm and guard dog. So I packed my backpack and we set off for northern Ontario. Six hours later, we finally arrived. A small green car was in the gravel parking lot, but I paid no mind. It's a big forest and the odds are good. I wouldn't even see that car's owner more than likely. I loaded Chief up with his gear, shrugged my backpack on, and shouldered my 73 Winchester. Then we set out. Me and Chief hiked for a few hours, and once we found a nice clearing, I decided to set up camp. Once I had the tent pitched and a small but substantial fire going, I grabbed my mini fishing rod, and Chief and I walked down to the creek nearby to catch supper. While I was fishing, Chief wandered off and I assumed he was just off chasing a rabbit or something of the like. Later, after I had seen two nice fish, I was on my way back to camp when Chief came back with what looked like a deer leg. It still had some meat on it so I assumed it was from a fresh carcass. The end seemed weird though, as if it had been snapped and twisted off more than pulled and yanked. I let Chief chew away at it for a bit while I cooked the fish. I gave Chief some fish and we enjoyed our meals. Once we finished our supper, we decided to scout where we would be hunting tomorrow. I decided to leave my gun at camp while we looked around because where we were, it was prohibited to discharge firearms after dark anyway. That being said, I did have my tomahawk and headlamp, and we set off about 45 minutes later, we had covered probably a mile or so, and at this point, we had entered a small canyon. That's when I heard a gut-wrenching roar that sounded like a woman screaming in agony. I froze, quickly taking my tomahawk out, and Chief crouched and growled. We were ready for a fight. Another roar and a subsequent scream was all I needed, and I took off in the direction I heard the noise. After about a hundred yards, I froze, but Chief charged right past me. Thirty yards in front of me was a monster. That's the best word I can use to describe the size of this thing. It, it might have been a grizzly bear, I don't know, but it had the frame of a wolf. It had tight brown skin and thick fur. It was on its hind legs clawing and roaring at something on the ground. But that was all I saw before I turned and was met with Chief running silently through the leafy brush. However... When Chief knew that I had seen him, he let out his signature deep and menacing growl that had made grown wolves whimper in the past. With this two-legged devil dog, whatever it was in front of us, it didn't even hesitate briefly. This was all Chief needed as he was able to sail down, hitting the thing, making it fall over, and running with me to get out of there. I've never seen a more brave dog in my life, but when you get hit with 150 pounds of muscle and meat going full speed, it doesn't matter what you are, you will feel it. After that, we noticed that there was a girl on the ground. Luckily, since the thing was off guard, we were able to pick her up and get her running off with us. Her name was Jenna, and I was able to personally escort her to the nearest hospital. On the way back, we learned that she was a rather avid camper and had been probably in this area multiple times camping. Northern Ontario has forests that are absolutely beautiful, but there are things in those forests that we have never seen before. Whether it's some sort of supernatural monster, some sort of crazy natural amalgamation, or just a weird bear, I don't know, but I don't want to find out. Scary Figure in Upstate New York by Anonymous So to give you some background information on this story, I would like to start with the fact that I am European. I have shared a couple of stories a few months back about some things that happened to me in Tuscany, Italy. As for my friends and me in this story, we are from Spain, and when this happened at the end of September of 2023, we were pretty new to the United States. I moved here a while back for law school, and so did quite a few of my friends. We had been living here for a few months and decided to explore the nature of this beautiful continent, as well 
since we all live in New York City, we wanted to try to get away a bit. So, long story short, we decided to go on a road trip to Canada, driving around Lake Ontario, and then driving back to the New York City area through New York State, upstate. I am a male, and my friends were three females. For anonymity, let's call them Lisa, Anna, and Charlotte. Everything was going pretty smooth until the last night of our trip. So, for our last night, we rented an off-the-grid cabin in a remote area of the upstate New York woods. We were half an hour's drive from Harrisburg. Lisa and I decided to spend one night in this cabin because we wanted to be one with nature. The cabin was super old, made from old log woods, and there was no running water or electricity. Both Lisa and I had experience with survival in the wild in Europe. I had been a boy scout and a scout leader for quite some time. All of my friends with me were purebred city girls. They needed to gain some experience with camping or just being in a place where there was no phone service, as was the case with this cabin. We had been driving all day to get there, and when we reached the beginning of the forest, it was already past 10 p.m. and dark that night. While driving to this place, we lost connection with the GPS, so I had to drive to the cabin on intuition paired with good old-fashioned maps, hoping for the best while driving on these muddy, dangerous trails. It was also rainy the whole day. On the way there, Anna and Charlotte in the back of the car had a moment after they lost phone service. They got pretty uneasy for the rest of the ride. Suddenly, in the pitch black darkness of the forest, we saw a campfire, but there were no houses or people around. It was a well-organized campfire since the fire was not spreading and was not as big as a bonfire. It startled all of us, as we were a little weirded out since there was no one around for miles and we were deep in the forest. Plus, it was very late at this point. When this happened, we reached the end and figured we had taken the wrong trail at the crossroads. So I turned around and we were on our way again. Half an hour and a couple of wrong trails later, we finally arrived at our destination, where we saw the first glimpse of this godforsaken cabin in the middle of nowhere. When we arrived, it was still raining, and Anna and Lisa were not in the mood to get out of the car and into the cabin with zero lights or electricity. So me and Lisa left the lights on in the vehicle and went inside the cabin to scope things out. We were using our phone flashlights to check the cabin and to see if we could find any old flashlights, which we were able to. We eventually were able to turn on the fireplace, which didn't work all that well because all the wood was incredibly wet and no one had prepared dry wood anywhere. So, with a couple of old-fashioned flashlights and a small improvised fire I made on the stove, we all got in the cabin. I started making pasta for us. Meanwhile, the girls were preparing the beds and closing the windows since it had already been very cold. The cabin had a small ladder leading to an elevated room or space with a bed where all three girls could fit in. I would take point and sleep downstairs in a bunk bed that seemed older than the First World War. While making pasta, Anna, one of the city girls, came up to me and knowing that both Elisa and Charlotte did not like to hear anything scary at night, told me that she had seen an old cemetery in the middle of the forest on the way to our cabin and that she had seen a figure walking around there. I laughed it off at first as I thought it was nothing. As mentioned in my previous story, I do not believe in scary stuff. Being from Spain, we take promises very seriously. To swear on God is very serious to us and she swore to God that she was not lying. I told her then and there that I believed her but there was no need to panic as I would lock all the doors when we would go to sleep. We ate our pasta, made a few s'mores, which were lovely by the way, and drank a few beers. Or at least I did. They all had just one. I can assure you I'm not drunk after a couple of beers and that I would never start to hallucinate, in case anyone thinks I saw stuff because of the beer. They all went to sleep pretty early after finishing the s'mores and their beer, and I, considering that I love the outdoors and don't mind a little bit of rain, decided to take my last beer and flashlight outside to the porch. It was also made of ancient wood. It felt like it would crash down at any second. 
I sat myself down with my beer while enjoying the sound of the rain and the lovely sight of not seeing a single light in the distance. I could greatly appreciate this coming from New York City, and I just scanned the area with my flashlight. There was nothing to see besides many trees, a small creek further away, and all I could hear was the wind, the rain, and the water down in the creek. That was until I suddenly heard what I could describe as a weird roar. The first thing that came to my mind was a bear. Now, I had researched well before our trip and knew bears usually kept away from this part of the state. Not to say it's impossible, of course, you never know, but I also know that the bear roar would sound a bit different, as I've heard them quite a few times, and this did not resemble it at all. It was a deep roar, if you get what I mean, but it wasn't the same. I was startled but not scared at this point. I continued to scan the rest of the forest for as long as I could. Then, I saw a glimpse of a figure, well hidden into the tree line. I want to describe the figure as best as I can. It was tall. As a reference, I'm 6'4", and I thought this thing was at least a foot or two taller than me. It was well hidden because of its brown fur. At least I think that's what it was. It could even be skin, in this case. It was blended in very well with the trees of the color of autumn. It was aware of my presence, as I saw two eyes glimpsing into my flashlight. I could not tell you what it was, but I swear on everything I know, it was not a bear. It was bipedal and had relatively long arms. We looked at each other for what seemed like an eternity, but honestly was no more than five to ten seconds before it began to vanish very slowly behind a tree. Then I heard another roar. I felt my hair stand up. I was terrified at this point. I went inside quickly, locked all the doors, and closed all the curtains. I went to bed and tried to wave this off as just exhaustion and anxiety, but when I woke up in the morning, I got breakfast and got the heck out of there. I returned to the city that never sleeps, and I feel way safer here. I am an avid outdoorsman and a fellow swamp dweller. I was once a well-known outdoor survivalist YouTuber from the early years of YouTube when 10k subscribers was a lot, so I won't be using any names just in case a few of you may remember us. This took place in Florida back in 2010 during the summer. Me and two friends were camping on the Alafia River on a bend in the river not too far downstream from a county park built around a local spring. We loved the spot and went there frequently in the early years of our channel. The area is much more developed now, and since we made videos out there, the place lost its charm as more and more people have discovered it. We seldom go back now. This particular trip, we decided to camp right on the river in a spot that afforded a beautiful view of it and the surrounding flora and fauna. To get there, you just had to follow the trail that eventually went down an embankment and turned to run along the river for a dozen yards or so. We usually camped atop said embankment, and even had semi-permanent shelter up for a while, but decided to go down and set up camp along the river trail instead. We set up camp, gathered wood, started our fire, cook, drank, and relaxed. Night eventually fell, and we all turned in around the same time. I believe it was around 10 p.m. or so. We had, of course, been telling stories of the skunk ape, which is Sasquatch's smaller and smellier cousin from Florida. I have an odd habit of not being able to sleep much when I go camping unless I am the first person to fall asleep. If not, I kind of just doze off and wake up every few minutes. I'm never really ever asleep. In this case, I was not the first one out. I soon heard soft snoring from the other tent shared by my two companions on this weekend trip. So I settled into a comfortable position in my little dome tent and drifted between wakefulness and sleep for a few hours. Always keeping an ear out. One thing about rainy Florida summer nights is the sounds of the swamp. Being right off the river, there was a constant cacophony of frogs, toads, crickets, and the odd nocturnal bird, all screaming into the night as they try to get laid. While it can be loud, there is a natural rhythm to it that I enjoyed. There were even some coyotes yipping somewhere off and across the river from us. Suddenly, all the sound ceased. I came fully awake and laid still for just a moment. 
eyes open as I tried to puzzle out what was off. It was when I heard the gentle trickle of water from the river that I realized everything had gone quiet. I sat up and tried my best to peek out from under the rain fly of my tent, which was covering the screen. I would normally be able to see out of it, but I could not see more than just a sliver. It was so dark outside, it really didn't help anything either. I heard crunching and the rustling of leaves on the embankment above us, in the spot that we would normally camp. I listened for a moment, figuring it was either the raccoon I had chased off earlier with the slingshot, or even more likely, an armadillo, which was abundant in our area and can make enough noise in the brush to make you think it was a bear charging at you. It was then that I noticed the crunching was following the pattern of a person walking through the brush on two legs, not the slithering rustle of a small game moving around. At this point, I figured either one of my companions was up trying to spook me, or a local had come out and was walking around at night with no flashlight, which was a pretty disturbing and questionable prospect in and of itself. The footfalls moved across the embankment above me, towards the top of the trail that led down to where we were. My tent was set up in the grass at the base of the trail, right where it leveled off and turned to follow the river. My companion's tent was set up a few yards away on the left of the trail. The footfalls made it to the top of the trail and stopped. They were maybe 10 or 12 feet away from where I sat. My trepidation grew as seconds passed in eerie silence. There was a sudden loud crack of wood from the embankment above me. The unmistakable sound of a tree branch being whacked and broken against the trunk of a tree. I knew this for certain because we had been doing the same thing earlier in order to break down large dead branches of firewood. Another whack sounded, this time closer to my tent. I reached over and quietly scooped up my large mag light LED flashlight and my machete. I placed them both in my lap as I sat up. I, I was sitting cross-legged, waiting patiently. I usually carried a pistol with me, but left it in the car on this trip for a reason I can no longer recall. The footfalls at the top of the trail started again, one after another. This time I could feel the weight of them in the seat of my pants as they came. This thing was heavy. The ground vibrated with the thump under its weight with each step. My skin began to prickle as my neck and ears grew hot with the sudden rush of fear. The footfalls stopped within an arm's reach of my tent. I listened hard and thought that I could make out the faint sound of something breathing quietly. Ragged in the darkness outside, I knew it was focused on me. The crushing weight of its attention drove me to near panic, as though some long forgotten instinct woke inside me and knew that I needed to get out of here. It needed me to run. It's the only survival. My breathing grew rapid and shallow, my chest tight as I continued to listen to the dead silence outside of my tent. Then as suddenly as it came, the dreaded weight lifted. I felt and heard the thing move past me down the trail towards my friend's tent. The frogs and crickets resumed, causing me to nearly jump out of my skin at the sudden rush of sound. As the thing moved past me, I was able to will myself to the flap of my tent where I slowly unzipped it enough from the top corner in order to get my flashlight through. I clicked my flashlight on and kept a tight grip on my machete as the bright LED beam lit up the night like a white mini sun. I swept it back and forth and saw nothing of what had just passed. Still too scared to get out, I zipped my tent up and resumed my cross-legged position. For the rest of the night, flashlight and machete held across my lap in case it came back. Dawn came two and a half hours later. I heard the zipper of the other tent open, so I also emerged. I saw my friend exit his tent, bleary-eyed as he moved off into the thicket of bushes to relieve himself in the pre-dawn light. I approached and asked him if he heard anything last night. He said he did, but he figured it was me walking around trying to creep them out. Told them it wasn't. He kind of shrugged it off and went back into his tent. I stayed outside and searched for signs of the thing, and I found nothing. No tracks or depressions in the ground, no bent or broken branches or twigs, no tufts of fur or hair, nothing. When my companions fully awoke and emerged from their tent for breakfast, I addressed it with them again 
and they again said they just thought it was me walking around. I described what I felt, but only got looks of disbelief from them. Something to note about this experience. There was no smell, which is of something of a telltale sign of a skunk ape in the other folks' accounts of running into one. The only thing that really points it to being a skunk ape would be the tree knocking, and the one thing that makes me dismiss it as a person was the feeling of dread that it brought with it. I have never felt anything like what I did that night. I had once been stalked by an elusive Florida panther, and it was nothing close to this thing. What was it? I may never know. Hello there. I've been listening to your program for a while and decided to share this. Maybe another listener has had this happen to them, because I still don't really know what this was. I grew up with acres upon acres of woods behind my house. A farmer owned most of it, but no one paid mind to us. There were huge fields on both sides of the woods and the farmer at one point had trails going through the woods to move cows from one pasture to the other. My brother, sister, and I would regularly be found playing out there. There was a creek back there too. We could fish or swim, or muck luck or whatever you want. Muck lucking is basically playing in the mud, catching frogs and salamanders. We'd been out there in any weather, any season, in the daylight, in the dark, you name it. I used to hike the woods on moonlit nights as a kid and was quite comfortable in its surroundings. The location of my home was in southeastern Pennsylvania, Chester County. The area still had plenty of open space at the time, and wildlife was really just foxes, raccoon, deer, squirrel, etc. Nothing too scary or aggressive, and the coyotes hadn't come back at this point. I'm about 10 or 11 when this occurred. My friend Haley and I had been hiking for most of the morning, and had gone up through the hills through the woods to the top of the pasture. The trees were less there, and they had these huge vines that we used to make swings out of. We had hung out for a while, and then headed back down the hill towards the woods. The day was sunny and clear, and a really nice autumn day. As we entered the woods and made our way to the trail, the clouds started to move in. It got grayer and a little cold. Nothing major. Haley and I were enjoying shuffling through the leaves and it sounded like the sound of the leaves were being echoed, like we'd shuffle and something would shuffle behind us. I stopped and told Haley that something was copying me. She shuffled forward and said, See, I'm not copying you. After she shuffled, we heard the leaves move behind us up the hill a bit, and we both turned to see if it was a deer or something else. But what we saw was something entirely different. It was like a man deer or a deer man or whatever you would want to call it. It was coming right towards us. We know how protective they get and we knew that the buck could get a little gnarly too. So, as we were looking, we hear the lowest growl that made the hairs stand up on the back of my neck. Haley grabs my arm and we slowly start backing up. I swear on my mother's grave that we backed up. You could see the leaves moving like something was walking through them, but we couldn't see them actually move. It was only about 30 feet away and we would move behind trees to try to get a better look while backing up. I was trying to rationalize it in my brain by saying it was just a deer. The leaves moved out of the way of whatever was walking through them, and it was large. It kept coming down the hill just behind us, and the growl came again louder this time, a growl that rumbled in my chest. We turned tail and bolted it out of those woods as fast as we could, and it felt like this thing was close behind. I can remember Haley falling when we reached the line between the woods and my backyard and I remember dragging her by the arm until she caught her feet. I was still trying to catch a glance and trying to see if I saw anything, but I still saw nothing chasing us. We ran straight to the house and hid looking from her bedroom window. We had a clear view from her window to our woods, yet nothing ever came out. We didn't go into the woods for a while. And even so, we only enter a couple of feet before we feel like we were being watched. My brother and his friend had a similar run-in, but luckily had their quads. They were further in the woods and were fishing, just like our day. He said it started to get cloudy and colder, kind of out of the blue, and he said he heard someone on the trail further down. This is opposite of where the trail goes from our house. It's deeper in towards a waterfall. 
He said it sounded like someone was riding their horse down towards them. He called out to them because he didn't want the rider or the horse to get spooked since everything is kind of on a bend. Instead of a voice, a growl was the response. He then said he and Gary didn't waste any time. They left all their tackle and poles and flew home on the quads. I hadn't told my brother about what happened to me and Haley, but I think these, these occurrences are definitely connected. What do you guys think? Thanks for listening to these creepy and allegedly true Deep Woods Horror Stories sent in by viewers just like you. As always, if you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, be sure to submit your story at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. You can also submit your story on reddit at r slash thedarkswamp. I would love to see your story and potentially share it with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that truly help keep this show going on a daily basis. If you enjoyed these stories tonight, be sure to hit that like button as it helps me out a ton. The more likes this video gets, the more YouTube promotes it, and that helps me grow this channel. If you're new to the swamp, why not join us? Be sure to subscribe and turn on that notification button so you never miss a new episode. I upload them nearly every single day on all things natural and supernatural. I also live stream multiple times a week, reading scary stories and chatting with you guys real time. Thank you guys so much for supporting the swamp the way you do. I couldn't do this on a daily basis without you guys. If you're on the go but don't have YouTube Premium, but still want to download and listen to your favorite Swamp Dweller scary stories no matter where you are, you can download them absolutely free from Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and pretty much everywhere else you find your favorite podcast online. It's absolutely free to do so and always will be. I'd love to know in the comments down below what story was your favorite tonight. It helps me pick better stories and I love seeing your reviews. If you made it all the way to the end, Today's code word is Alpha Bigfoot. The funniest comments with the words Alpha Bigfoot in them will be pinned at the top as usual. Thank you guys so much for supporting the swamp the way you do. Be sure to join me over on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all that good stuff. And I'll see you all soon with another creepy episode.